So what are cells? Well, all living organisms are composed of cells. The simplest organisms are made of just one single cell. We call them unicellular organisms. But more complex organisms, like many animals and plants, are made of lots of cells, and these are called multicellular organisms. Now, in multicellular organisms, there are many different types of cells that are specialized to carry out particular functions. And inside the cells are smaller structures, which we call organelles, and each organelle carries out a particular task that then gives that cell its, its particular function. So if we look at what we call a generalized cell first, this maybe isn't really sort of, you know, most cells are specialized to do a job, but we just pick a kind of general type of cell and look at that rather than going into the specialized cells first. And this is an animal cell. Animal cells have a cell membrane. Now the cell membrane is the boundary between the inside and the outside of the cell and it controls what comes in and out of the cell. We say it is partially permeable. The nucleus there is the largest organelle and it's this is a dark spot within this uh, with the cell and that is where the genetic material is stored for the cell, the DNA. And the genetic material then controls what the cell does. So really this is the control center for the cell. The cytoplasm is this kind of jelly-like fluid that fills the main part of the cell. Lots of chemical reactions happen there and things are dissolved in the cytoplasm and the organelles are obviously within the cytoplasm. One of those organelles is a ribosome. Ribosomes are tiny, tiny little particles and they have one job to do which is protein synthesis, building proteins. Really, what cells do is they make lots of proteins. Proteins can be used for all sorts of things. They are hormones and enzymes and structures within the body are built out of protein. So the cell's job really is to build proteins and it does that using instructions found in the nucleus, in the DNA, and the ribosomes are the things that can read those instructions and start to make the proteins for that cell. Also, another thing that cells have are mitochondria, these sort of capsule-shaped organelles this is where aerobic respiration happens. Now that's a very, very important process because that is how energy is released for the cell to use from the food that, that the cell has. So it takes that food source, usually glucose, and it breaks it down to release energy in the form of something called ATP. And that can power all of the processes that the cell needs to do, such as making proteins. If we look at a plant cell, it's similar, but there's a few differences here. It's got a more regular shape, and that's due to this cell wall. The cell wall is there for structure and support. It's made of cellulose, and it's very, 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 very strong. It doesn't have any role in what comes in or out. That's still the membrane, which is inside the cell wall. But now we've got another thing, a large thing inside the cell here called a vacuole. This is full of cell sap, which is water and dissolved salts, and th that helps put pressure on the cell wall and force the cytoplasm out against the cell wall, which keeps the cell what we call turgid, gives it structure and shape, which is very important in a plant because plants don't have a skeleton. You've got the cytoplasm, you've got ribosomes again for protein synthesis, you've got mitochondria again for respiration, uh, but you've also got these green organelles here called chloroplasts, which are full of chlorophyll. That is where photosynthesis takes place. So if you're comparing animal and plant cells, you can see the two diagrams here, and you can see that the chloroplast and the vacuole and the cell wall are the three extra organelles that plant cells have. And you would need to be able to draw those cells and recognize all those structures.